Hi, I'm Mary Poppin with Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be showing you how to add rain to a scene using Mocha, After Effects, and Boris Continuum Complete. So, we're going to import our footage, and we want to make sure to check our interpretation of our footage inside of After Effects. We want to make sure that our frame rate is the exact frame rate we're going to be using for our final comp. We want to make sure that our pixel aspect ratio is what we want to use for our final comp. In this case, we're going to use square. We're going to hit OK, and we're going to drag this down to our timeline. We want to make sure that our composition settings are also where we need them to be. So if you have like a setting in your preferences in After Effects that conforms your comp to 24 frames per second, you're going to want to make sure that when you load your footage into Mocha, you use 24 frames per second. But in this case, we're going to use 23976, and again, checking our square pixels. We're going to hit OK. We're going to select our footage, and we want to add rain to this shot. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to separate this guy from the background so I can do rain into layer passes. What you're going to notice about this shot as I play it is that this is panning left to right. In order to get a realistic movement to our rain, we're going to do a mocha track, and we're going to link our rain to that track so that we get this nice left and right motion. But we also want to have two different levels of rain to add a sort of realistic sheen to our shot. And then we're also going to color correct this using some BCC color corrects. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to animation and we're going to track this in Mocha for After Effects. If you haven't registered your version of Mocha for After Effects, definitely make sure you do that. I'm going to hit register later right now and we're going to let Mocha load our footage. Again, we want to check and make sure our frame rate's correct, pixel aspect ratio is correct. Okay, we're going to hit OK. And now we have our shot inside of Mocha. Now Mocha is a planar tracker, so it's actually really, really easy to do rotoscoping inside of Mocha. We're going to come in here and we're going to actually just draw a loose roto shape. Well, I say loose, but what I mean is a not super accurate roto shape around the top of our guy here, because we don't have to have perfect roto to do this shot. What we need is just decent roto. We're going to track his head here, because that's where you're going to be focused. We want to make sure that our lines are fairly nice on the outside of our head. And we're going to let this track the scene. We're going to call this head track. Now we're going to track translation, scale, rotation, and shear. I usually don't use perspective when I do rotoscoping. And if you don't like these thumbnail views, they can be useful for roto, because you can always see where your points are. But they get in my way when I'm doing simple roto. So we're going to turn them off. We're going to track forward. So Mocha, because it's a planar tracker, is going to look for the pattern of pixels inside of this shape from frame 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, etc. And because we look over time, we're actually able to stay with the object even though we're going to move into blur here at the end of the shot. Now that's important because things like point trackers and feature trackers don't usually hang on to those sorts of details, but Mocha can because we are looking for a pattern of pixels moving relative to one another, which is really just a mouthful way of saying a texture that's moving in one direction. And as you can see, Mocha is holding on really very nicely, even though our face is getting pretty blurry here towards the end. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Auto Stabilize tool. So that's this hand tool right here, and what that means is activate quick stabilize mode. So we're going to use this to keep this shape in one location on our screen so that we are able to roto quickly and then see where our shape is off and correct it over time. So in this case, I'm going to select all of this. We're going to adjust this a little bit, and we're going to start scrolling backwards in our shot. And we're just going to correct it where it goes off screen. I'm sorry, off angle. And you can see it's very easy to correct your shape. So Mocha tweens between our track and the overall corrections that you make. You want to think of Mocha as your roto assistant. It's kind of like your unpaid intern. All right, so now we're going to turn auto stabilize off. And you can see that our shape is following really nicely according to how this guy is moving in our shot. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it does need to be able to be close enough to the object to sell that he's running through the rain. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to track his arms really quickly. Now, his arms I care less about because they're moving quite a bit, so you're not going to notice if they're a little off. So we're just going to come in here and make a little C-shape loop for this arm. We're going to make a C-shape loop for this arm, just like this, because we're making a garbage mat. We're really not doing articulated roto here. We're going to call this left arm. We're going to call this right arm. We're going to turn our track off on our head by turning the gear off because that's the action item in Mocha. And we're going to leave these here. Now we're going to make a new shape for his body. And for his body, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just relax right here for this curve using these X-blinds. We have Beziers if you want to use them. They're right here, but I use X-blinds when I roto because I feel like they're faster. We're going to call this body track. And we're going to grab body track and we're going to drag body track under left arm and right arm. And the reason we do that is because in Mocha, Mocha treats the layer pile uh, as holdout mats. So you want to have everything that's closest to the camera 
at the top of the layer pile and everything that's further from the camera further down in the layer pile. Now, what that does is that will hold out these arms from this track so that when we track his body, we're not tracking his hands as they move across his body. So, we're going to hit track backwards and we're going to correct the shape just a little bit. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. All it needs to be is close enough to sort of sell that he's separate from his background. We're going to jump back to our keyframe here and we're going to keep tracking forwards. And we generally don't care if it tracks perfectly, but if we feel like it's slipping, we can stop and we can start correcting the shape and then continue to track. That's kind of the power of Mocha. You don't have to just live with what the results are. You can tweak them. So I'm going to tweak them by dragging this inside a little bit more. Now, I'm really cheating. You're not supposed to track two angles like this at the same time because they're really technically multi-planes. But because this is a garbage mat, it matters less. If we were doing a fine mat, I would want to roto his hand, his forearm, and the top of his arm separately and get a really articulated mat. But we're not really doing that here. All right, so I'm going to finish just correcting his roto shapes right quick. I'm just going to drag these points over, and you'll notice I'm using the transform tool where I can sort of manipulate multiple points at once. All right, I'm going to call that good enough to sort of sell the shot that I'm trying to do, which is to say just two levels of detail. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to track this background, but I kind of want to show you one of the cool things you can do with Mocha. A lot of times with point and feature trackers, you have to follow whatever you're tracking. With Mocha, you don't. As long as the data is moving in a planar way, you can just draw your shape and you can read everything that moves underneath that shape, a little bit like a scanner. In this case, we're going to go to Link to Track. We're going to call this BG Track. We're going to drag this to the bottom of our layer pile. And we're going to Link to Track None. So what's going to happen is we're going to turn our grid and surface tool on so we can see what our track is doing. We're going to track only translation, scale, and rotation because we don't really need any more data than that. And we're going to track this forward. What you're going to notice is that while we're tracking, our surface and grid tool, which are children of the track, which means they follow the track, are going to move right over to the right, which is kind of a redundant thing to say. And then we're going to see our shape that's going to stay totally still, and that's because the data is being read and the track is moving accordingly. You can change any of your translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective tracking data at any time. You can change your minimum percent of pixels used at any time in order to get more accurate data. It'll slow you down, but you can increase it. You can also change the shape that you're tracking at any time. So if I just stop this and move my shape a little bit, what you're going to notice when I keep tracking is that nothing is going to change. So you have all this freedom to change what you need Mocha to track so that you can get a better track. You can't always just follow one location through a shot and think that's going to give you the detail that you need. Now remember, I'm tracking the background so that I can track the camera movement for the rain. All right, so we have a very nice track. Now. Let's go back over to After Effects. In After Effects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. and I'm going to call this Guy Foreground. And I'm going to rename this layer to Background. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Mocha for After Effects and we're going to go to Export Shape Data. Now, all of these shapes can be exported in one go. We're going to go to Export Shape Data and we're going to do Mocha Shape Data for After Effects. We're going to do all visible layers, copy that to the clipboard, and then over in After Effects, we're going to go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask. What you're going to see is we're going to have this nice outline on our guy. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add this to Add. We're going to select all of these shapes. I'm going to add a pixel feather of about 25 pixels around our guy, just to sort of soft fade so that we get rid of any sort of errors in our garbage mat. I don't really care that it's right on his line. I just care that it differentiates him from the background. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, New, Null Object. Okay, and this Null Object is going to be our Rain Motion. So we're going to rename this to Rain Motion. And we're going to go over to Mocha for After Effects. We're going to select our BG track, and we're going to go to Export Tracking Data. And we're going to do After Effects Transform Data. You can also export as corner pins, but that's not going to give us the information we need right now. So we're going to do After Effects Transform Data, copy to the clipboard, go into After Effects, and with all things, we want to make sure that we're pasting in on the first frame of the clip inside of After Effects. We want to select our layer, and we want to go to Edit, 
paste. What we end up with is this nice null that moves along with our data. From here what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer for our Boris Continuum Complete Rain Effects. We're going to go to Layer, New, Solid. Now normally solids are the size of your comp, so they're usually going to be 1920 by 20, 1080 when you make them, but because this needs to pan left to right, I'm going to make this larger. So I'm going to make it about 4,000 pixels long by about 2,000 pixels tall. And this is also why we want to paste on a null, because you can't paste your Mocha data on layers that are not the same size as your comp inside of After Effects without getting some funky results. So it's important that we connect this to our rain motion and not paste our data directly onto here. We're going to call this BG Rain, and we're going to make the color black because we're going to use this as a screen layer when we put our rain on here. So we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and we're going to make some foreground rain as well. Not train, rain. And we're going to hit OK. Now, we're going to take BG Rain and we're going to drag it under BG. We're going to take FBG Rain and we're going to drag it under um, and above FG. Now we're going to take our modes for our blending modes and we're going to go to screen and again screen. Alright, so now we can see our guy when we've got two different layers that we're going to change the details on. So we're going to hit FG rain and I'm going to go to BCC rain. BCC rain, we're going to drag this over to our FG rain layer and we're going to start changing some of the details here. Now I want to make the rain amount about 50 and what I want to also do is I'm going to come down here into raindrops and we're going to change the size to like four. That's going to make our raindrops awfully large because they're going to be foreground raindrops. Now we're going to add a little bit of a blur to our raindrops because it's closer to camera. So we're going to make this probably a solid two. Okay. And that should give us some nice foreground rain over the top of our comp. Just like that. We want to take this and we want to make it move according to our rain motion. So we're going to pick whip this to rain motion, just like this. And now our rain will move like our camera moves. We're going to want to do the same thing to our background. So we select BG rain, select BCC rain, drag it onto BG rain. And now what I actually want to do is I want to make the rain amount much more. So we're going to make this 200. So we have all this rain in the background. And we're going to do a blur of 1. And we're going to check our raindrops. And I think I want the size to be like 0.5, just so, just so we can see it a little bit better. And now we have two different levels of rain. And you can see it looks like the guy is moving through the rain because the background rain is way more intense than the foreground rain on our guy. So that sells our effect. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to Layer, New, adjustment layer and what we're going to do is we're going to do some color corrections. We're going to do BCC color and we're going to drag that right on our adjustment layer. Now in our BCC color layer we can come in here and we can change the contrast so it's not very contrasty because that'll make it look a little hazier and we're going to change the hue of our shot to be a little bit more blue we're not going to keep it this saturated, obviously. And we're going to change our blacks a little bit, bring them up a little bit, not much. And we're going to change our mix with original to sort of blend this back over the top of our shot so that we get a rainy look. So there's our original, and here's our much more rainy look. And if we still don't feel like the hue is blue enough, we can change it. So we can knock this down even further to sort of take the color out of it and make it feel like a very rainy shot. So again, original, and this is our new rain color correction. From here, all you have to do is go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and here's the before and after, so you can see what we're doing. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference between the original shot and our final, very simple rain addition. Now you can actually get really creative with your shots and you can get really complex. So in this shot we actually have a way more complex mat in order to make the rain seem like there's a lot of depth to it. And what you can see is we've got this shot that's quite a pan and it goes off quite into the distance. 
So what we actually do with this is we build a depth mat inside of After Effects using our shapes from Mocha. So in this case, we're just going to double click our car mats and show you what I mean. What we've done is we've created this very simple depth mat. It's pretty flat. You know, we don't have round edges to it or anything that moves our shapes through the scene. And we use our Mocha shapes to roto the cars. And we do some hand animation of brightness inside of After Effects to sort of bring this closer. And then we actually do a ramp on the back background and we hook that up to the camera motion of the shot the same way we hook the camera motion up inside of our previous shot. What we end up with using the same exact techniques if we look over here we have our FG rain and our BG rain and for our BG rain we actually use the car mats to make it drive through the BG rain and then we have some close to camera FG rain to sell the shot. So it's the same exact thing, but a little bit more difficult. So don't feel like it has to be a simple shot in order to fix it. Now we're just going to add this to the render queue as well. And as you can see, here is our before shot with our cars driving through a light sprinkle. Nothing really to write home about. We want that dramatic rain added and it's just not there. And then we're going to jump over to our after shot. And here is our rain added to the shot. It really changes the feel of the shot. And we did that with just some simple masking, a simple depth mat, and Boris Continuum complete. And if you have any questions, I am Mary Poppin with Imagineer Systems. Please find us on our website. We have a forums and we are happy to help.